Uh, this talk will be about what's new in the, in the land of risk I will do a quick uh, description of what it is. Uh, my name is Michal Konečný and I'm software engineer, oh, senior software engineer right now in CP team. Okay, and I'm a high mage of the risk which is the role I, the, I uh, assign it to myself. So <laughs> it's not something that is really <laughs> as a title. Okay, so if you want to know how the release monitoring.org looks, this is how I imagine it when I'm writing my blog post as a wizard. So yeah, it's really nice. Uh, realm, a nice board that is magical. And I'm living in the highest tower you can see here, see there. Okay, so let's look at next. Okay, so let's start with some basic sorcery. What you can see in releasemonitoring.org. So the releasemonitoring.org is actually made from two components. The one is Anitya. It's a web interface that is uh, accessible on releasemonitoring.org. It's uh, the part of uh, releasemonitoring.org that uh, the user will uh, have some experience with. And uh, here you can add your projects you want to watch. You can uh, add the mappings for them to the distributions. Uh, you can uh, edit the projects that are actually there. Uh, we support plenty of uh, different backends, which are the uh, pages or the, the pages you can use for, to actually check. Uh, okay, so what is does? It does uh, that it checks the pages or the projects you provide and when found a new version it uh, adds it to the Anitya and then emits a message to the rest of the Fedora. Uh, it does this automatically, sorry. Okay, let me just disable the phone. Okay, so, uh, and the second part is uh, the new hotness. New hotness is something that uh, will not too much people actually see. It's just some script running uh, or federal messaging consumer running uh, in background. It's, uh, it's, lis it's listening for the messages emitted by Anitya. Uh, and for the messages emitted by Koji, if there is, uh, if the scratch build is needed, uh, it creates uh, or updates Bugzilla tickets with the new version. With uh, this is actually notification for packagers in Fedora. You can see that uh, there is new version, and uh, it's starting scratch builds uh, if configured. You can configure this on the uh, package uh, repository. There is a monitoring option and you can change if you want to monitor. If you want to monitor, you will get the notification in Bugzilla. If you don't want to monitor, you don't get anything. And if you want to monitor with Scratch, it will uh, start a Scratch build for you. So let's look at the next one. Okay, so let's look more closely at the Anitya. Anitya is a realm of magic. There are plenty of mystical beasts running around, plenty of uh, mystical bugs occurring. So <laughs> it's a joyable place. Okay, so some magic numbers because all, all engineers love numbers. So, uh, 
I actually uh, created contribute. I found out the contribution from the last NAS. And in the uh, parentheses, you can see the uh, contribute the difference between this year and the previous year. So we had eight releases in Anitya. Uh, there was a really big release. I released 1.00, which was a really big one. And it took me plenty of months to actually prepare it. So then I started to do releases more often. This is why we have eight releases and uh, four was previous year. Uh, we have 20, 128 commits from seven different contributors. Uh, we have 62 new issues and we closed 85 of them. Current version running is 1.30. Uh, it was uh, 0, 18, 0 uh, on the last nest. So we are actually released 1.00, which was really big. And number of projects that are watched by releasemonitoring.org right now, right now it will be probably higher, but uh, when I created the slides, it was 182,106, which is 70,000 uh, more than the last year. And map to Fedora packages are 20,000 of those projects, almost 20,000, which is 2,000 more than the last year. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Okay, so I have a few really useful goblins running around that are actually derivating the, those things. So I just paving my magical stuff and they are doing things. So what they add? What they deliver? Okay, so we add preview mode, which is uh, which was something that was uh, really wanted by plenty of people. It allows the uh, users of the Anitya to actually try the changes before they save them or add the new projects, which is really nice. You can you just have test check uh, a button at the project page. Um, Maybe I will show you show it later if we will have time. And uh, this is very very useful useful for anything you want to do because on the other hand you need you, previously you need to uh, actually save the changes and then wait if this will fail or not because it uh, wasn't uh, very useful to. It wasn't really uh, not useful, but uh, there wasn't an uh, option to actually see it uh, when you save it. Okay, so we are uh, uh, plugging the Paralys versions, which is uh, you can now know, know, see uh, the stable and stable versions. There is even field how you can recognize them. The only thing that is not really recognizable is uh, there uh, are the even versions. If the project takes even versions as uh, not uh, not stable, this is not something that Anitya can recognize right now. Uh, we, we have a version filter for incoming versions, so you can actually uh, create filter for the versions you don't want to uh, get like uh, dev versions or uh, something similar. Uh, there is an up, uh, update to the federal messaging that uh, it could actually emit more than one version. Uh, previously, only the latest version was uh, announced. If there were more version in one check than, the last, than only one. But right now it's, it's not, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's sending, uh, multiple message multiple versions at all at once and uh, we will probably use this even in the new hotness okay next one is project archivation you can actually archive the projects if there is project that is no longer uh, 
uh, maintained upstream or it's not alive or it's not used anymore you can archive it or the admin, admin can administrator of anitar can ad, uh, archive it so we don't lose the information and the versions but uh, the project will not no longer be checked and it's no longer editable uh, there is full override of the documentation. Documentation was written almost from scratch. So uh, there is plenty of uh, use cases, how the user could use it and uh, uh, the guides, how to do it, how to do plenty of things. Uh, Rewrite of the projects menu. The projects uh, were so showing really strange things. So right now it's it should show what is there. Uh, complete uh, a link to this kit for Fedora packages. Now you can see if there is mapping for Fedora, you can click on it and it will uh, redirect you to the uh, this kit page. And same for the PLD Linux, which was done for some uh, by someone from the PLD Linux. Okay, mm, let's look what we have uh, next. Okay, so. What is currently uh, happening with Anitya? So the Anitya has uh, version 1.40. Uh, oh, it's prepared, prepared for 1.40. We have 1.30. Uh, what is done uh, in this is the version filter is working in preview mode. It wasn't uh, till now it wasn't working in preview mode it was working uh, uh, it wasn't checked in preview mode it was just uh, it was just saved so you didn't see what actually changed uh, we add Python 3.9 support because this is uh, Python that is currently on Fedora 34 uh, we migrated to Zool Previously, it was on Travis, and uh, I used Travis Org, and it stopped working. And we were limited by the number of uh, of tests you can actually run by day. So I migrated to Zool. Uh, we have a new back backend. This is SourceForge backend that is actually uh, looking at the repository, not uh, really on the SourceForge page itself. And there is one thing that needs to be actually solved is social out. We are using social out uh, for authentication with Fedora and it doesn't work with Python 3.9. So we need to replace it or do something other with it. So the fix that will fix this issue is already merged in social out, but the maintainer who has the rights to actually release new versions doesn't uh, release anything and it looks like he didn't uh, do anything on the project for at least a year so we need to look at the replacement okay so this was everything for anitya and let's look at the new hotness new hotness is actually something that is floating in real of magic in Anitya. It's uh, something that is actually part of Anitya, but not really. It's not connected to Anitya. It doesn't actually, uh, it needs Anitya, but Anitya doesn't need it. So yeah, it's actually something that we can just use Okay, so some magic numbers from the to the start. We have three races, same as the previous year. Uh, we have 20 commits, which is less than the last year. It's mostly because I was busy with other projects and didn't have that much time to actually work on it. Uh, and one of the commits is really big. It's a fuller rewrite of the uh, of the new hotness. Uh, there were 20 issues created and 13 closed, which is less than last year. Current version is 0 0.13 for 
0.4, there were some bug fixes. Okay. There isn't too much new features in the new hotness. We only did some bug fixes. There are a few things that are actually in master branch, but uh, not really introduced to the production because uh, it needs some testing and I still need to do some things before I release the 1.0. And yeah, the current situation. Milestone 1.0 is currently being worked on. We are working on it. There are plenty of contribution. We did, um, we did the full refactoring of source code using clean architecture design. So now it's much more easier to maintain, uh, but it took plenty of time. We, uh, that is done to lock hash values when error happens during comparing of sources. This was one of the features that uh, the packagers wanted to see because sometimes it just uh, said in the Bugzilla ticket that uh, there was uh, some sources were, sim were identical to the previous version which is not really bad, but uh, they didn't know we, which sources. So now there is, there is uh, the hash and the source name. Uh, we are, there is Saturday out and Saturday air from curl process error for back to box command. Uh, this is when the Koji build fails. So you can see what exactly failed. Uh, the stack trace from the uh, from the Koji build failure is sent to the Baxilla ticket. Uh, there is even a link to where to uh, where to uh, report the issues if this is uh, the new hotness issues. So people don't need to actually look for it. They just uh, click the link. Uh, but what's left? Okay, so there is still uh, ongoing pull request for a filing pull request to this kit directly instead of Apache, attaching patches to Bugzilla. Uh, this will be more easier for packages to actually see that they have new uh, new pull request for the uh, for the package. So it will be probably easier than looking to uh, at the patch file. We will see in the future, the patch file will still be there. It will just be another functionality added, added uh, above it. Uh, I just uh, need to figure out a few things with uh, the tokens and API for the Pagur. And I would say that this will be in next nest or flock. Well, this will be in the new hotness. Okay, uh, I want to add the wor work for with federal messages containing multiple releases. I want to handle temporary errors more gracefully, so the new hotness isn't actually restarted, but uh, it's uh, just sending the message back to the message queue and waiting few uh, for some time to. Uh, to um, consume it again. And I want to use Redis as a cache because right now the new hotness is not really scalable. But, uh, there is issue when uh, uh, we receive the Koji message that the build is done, that uh, it will get to the bad instance of the new hotness that doesn't have the information there is built with this ID. So it happened that uh, we didn't get the info about the build being done. So right now, uh, uh, we are running only one instance of the new hotness. And uh, in the future, there will be two to actually uh, have better load balancing. OK. Oh, so. We are at the end of the presentation. Uh, I will probably show you 
show you the new hot uh, the release monitoring itself. Just uh, let me just open it. So for those who didn't see it yet, this is how it actually looks. You can see the output of the last check uh, here. It's up. Uh, it's uh, the check is going uh, really uh, often. So usually when one ends, there is only five minutes sleep and then starts again. Uh, it doesn't check all the projects every time. Just those that weren't checked in the last hour, and uh, this will be probably configurable in the future. So you can see we have uh, we checked 44,000 uh, projects last check, and most of them were okay. Uh, plenty of them were rate limited. This is uh, because of the GitHub rate limit. Uh, it's reset each hour, so we are trying to uh, address this. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, there could be anything done with on the on the github side i need to actually contact somebody from the github and ask if this could be uh, changed to, to higher limit for the risk monitoring or and we had few errors which we can actually check here and you can see what actually happened and how much how many checks Fail it in a row, which is a really big number. I should I should look at some of them. But uh, from the from the one hundred eighty two thousand projects, only uh, thousand of them failing. So it's really really uh, not uh, an issue. Okay, we can look at the updated. Oh, the last one was the APS Plus. You can look at the project itself. I see it's something uh, from PyPy and it has 007 as a number, uh, as, as last version. So it looks nice. And let's look what we have here for Fedora. So here is the Fedora, and if I look, let's say for the zero AD, you can see that there is the Fedora mapping for the zero AD. Uh, the last version is zero zero twenty four B, and if you look, uh, if you click at the zero AD, you will be redirected directly to the disk gate, and you can look directly on Fedora on the SRC. Uh, federalproject.org so i don't see any any questions actually so uh, at least not in q a i see one idea um, Okay, if we want to add more version check URLs, uh, this is definitely interesting idea. I would say it's possible, but uh, right now from the top of my head, I'm not sure what exactly needs to be changed and uh, how much it will actually add. Because right now one uh, project is one URL that is checked. There will be multiple, there will be two, maybe much more checking. So yeah, it depends. Maybe for the custom backend, we could uh, actually allow it, but for the most of the backends, we have URL that is that is actually, uh, we have Eurostat is actually, uh, how to say it, uh, 
that is related to the backend. So if you have GitHub backend, you you have GitHub com URL with the repository. So yeah, and for SourceForge, we created another backend actually. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely create two projects and one will check for the Firefox and second for Firefox candidates. You can use custom uh, custom backend where you can specify uh, the URL that will be checked and the regex that will, that will check it. With the preview mode, it's, uh, it's easier to actually uh, try if the regex is working how you want it. So at the end of the, of the presentation, I have some links. Okay, and I will probably share the link to the presentation itself. Just let me find it. Okay. Oh, if anybody want to look at the presentation itself, it could be found here. I see that <laughs> it's actually messed the link. Uh, the highlighter, but yeah, it's uh, you can find the PDF version which has some uh, graphical glitches. Not sure for why. I would say that the uh, the change of the of the color in the uh, center was the uh, issue here, and you can find the ODP version. So yeah. Both are accessible. And thank you everybody for your attention. And if you have any questions later, I would be here so you can ask probably in the chat. <laughs>